Hey everyone, Eric Gorner here with Performance Golf. To my left, Mr. David Ledbetter. First off, Mr. David, thanks for being out here with us. I'm up to Eric. Really Thank you. appreciate your time. I spent a lot of time studying coaching, studying David's coaching, his philosophies, work with some of the best players in the world, tons of amateur golfers. And today what we want to bring for you are a couple techniques that you can put into your swing to really make things more efficient, get things started correctly to make your life easier later on. A couple simple drills really that they could that they could take home. And I know we have a um, program we put together, the Swing Fix Sequence. We'll put that link down below. And there's three really cool drills, right, that we saw in there. Right. Really focused on getting set up and starting the swing um, correctly. One of the ones that I really like, David, that I saw in there has to do with really getting set correctly on the move away. Right. Right, getting things right. set correctly. and hitting from that spot. Maybe let's start with there. Okay. And then we'll work through um, some of the other little drills that we have. Okay, perfect. All right, so just take your setup there, if you will. All right, so there we go. So as you move the club away, we can see there's a little bit of navel involvement. Okay, your belly button's moving. And essentially, you want to get the butt of the club to about your right hip, or your, your trail hip pocket, shall we say. Okay. okay. So think about those lefties as well. Okay, so as we move it again, all right, so just remember, relax the arms. That's it's a very short movement. You can see the top of the club literally has only moved a few inches, yet the head has moved you know, maybe three feet, depending on the length of the club mm. you're using. So it's the same. The great thing about it, it's the same movement away with every club, even a mini version with a little pitch or a chip. Okay. So, so this key, this is so important because I say I I feel that so many problems happen with players early on. You know, taking it out. You know, whipping it around, turn, trying to turn too much, picking the club up. Uh -huh. So essentially, all they're doing is simply just move, shifting their their address position away a few feet, and ahead, and you put the club down now, put it down, and yep. yeah, boom. And you're the same. I like that visual. You're identical well. <laughs> position as you were to address. So there's not a lot going on, and unfortunately for most people, there's too much going on in the first. They few mess feet. up a lot right away. Absolutely, yeah. This synchronizes your arms and your body. It it really tracks your hand path, your club head path, and uh, if you get off to a good start, you know, there's a good chance you're gonna have a good ending. You know? Yeah, so right. that's the thing. I'm gonna kinda yeah, get there get and learn there. To hit from look, there. Look at it, you just check it out and then okay. hit, a, hit a shot or two, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm here from this, and obviously we talked in some of our other videos about the details of, of getting started correctly, but you know, one of the key take homes I think is important to repeat a lot is this is definitely more body driven, more, more core driven. Yes. Not all me just putting my arms and hands in that spot. Precisely. Okay. So I'm going to get there, I'm going to check it, and then I'm going to... And from this spot, David, just to reconfirm, I'm just, I'm thinking hit, but if anything, I'm finishing my turn and then... Yeah, exactly. Much less thought involved. Yeah, do you do you have to set the club? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously some players don't. If you're Steve Stricker, he doesn't set the club very much. And the older players, if you look at Greg Norman, Jack Nickers, I mean, had this wide one-piece takeaway. But today, you're seeing players pretty much when they're halfway back, you think about it, they're pretty much fully set. And yeah. all you do is just wind to the top, right? Just so, turn it up. Okay. Right. So that, this start helps the halfway back position. The halfway back position helps the top of the backswing position. And it's almost as if, hey, you get the backswing right, it prepares you perfectly for what you're doing coming down. So much less thought involved. I like it, and I think most amateur golfers would like that as well, right? Simple, simple as easy. Let's see if we can get started, and then I'll pause, and we'll hit from that spot. So here. And that was a very solid little seven iron for me. And so obviously, you know, listen, if you guys haven't done this before, like anything you do, it might take a swing or two to, you know, get used to starting from a different spot. But the whole point being, gosh, if we can get in a good spot here yeah. and eliminate so many of those variables. I'll tell you a little secret here, Eric. We, we've got a lot of players who have worked on this and yeah. are playing from there now. Yeah. Because they, 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 they flash it. They just, the timing is so much improved and so you're not having Ryan to worry Moore. about what's going on here and then having to compensate for it you know so it just simplifies the whole action i like that we did some videos uh david with rick smith and he was showing us like a right foot back drill and uh he said gosh a lot of players just hit it so good from here they, they end up you know playing from there yeah and uh, people will then send me a message, hey, is it okay if I play from this drill spot? And we say, hey, yeah, go ahead, right? No rules. Hey, no rules. Let it rip. Yeah, let it rip. Whatever's written on the scorecard. <laughs> so I'm getting it set here, finish my turn and go through. Let's do one more with this one. Get started good early. Boom to there. Finish my swing. Well, those two are very solid. It's very much the things that for me, you know, me who gets under playing. So 
let's say from a from a movement you know perspective one of the other drills that i really like that you do is where you have the player kind of start with the club forward and then learn how to bring it back yes yeah so this little drill we call the 12 inch torso trick and essentially what it all all it is okay in fact let's do it without the ball because this is actually a drill you do without a ball and that's it's great you don't have to actually hit balls with every drill but so what we're going to do is move the butt of the club forward about a foot okay 12 inches Okay, so from here, you can see virtually this is like a left-hander's takeaway position. Mm, okay, yeah, okay, so yeah. all we're going to do is replicate that through moving your belly button to here. Boom. Because a lot of people say, well, how do I get the club moving? Well, the thing is, if your arms are nice and relaxed, just get the belly button moving to get the thing mo in motion, and you just repeat that. And so now all of a sudden, you're in that perfect position from where you hit balls a few minutes ago. So if you want yeah, to get okay. into this position, this is how you, this is how you work on okay. it. It's almost like, as I say, that would be a perfect post-impact position, all right, with the face. Yep. Okay, now from there, we just... Boom, right back to there. That's it. Now, when I have the club forward, I have my, my torso, my core Sli turned a little? Yeah, slightly open, okay. exactly, so yeah. Then just move, there you go, to that's there. it. You can really feel the, you can really feel your core and your belly button moving the club, and that's the thing, you know, this is the, the dog wagging the tail syndrome. And a lot of players have this sort of movement forward and then go back. It's like in yeah. tennis when you're serving, when you go this way to go that way, right? Rather than just standing dead still. Uh, the other thing that really helps is your rhythm because it, it gets you flowing more. It just gets into motion. The problem is when you're standing over the ball, you know, the old shoulders get tight, the neck sure. gets tight, you know, they yank it away. I mean, the club only weighs a pound, so it's not that difficult to right. move it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting when you say that, obviously some of you, you can resonate with standing over the ball with a million thoughts and not sure how do I get going. We get that question all the time. I also realized, you know, when I'm on the course playing, and I didn't do this, I guess I just do it instinctively, all my practice swings I do that. I'm always here. Right. I, the club's forward, I've got some momentum, my body's turned, maybe a pressure in my lead foot. And I'm always feeling that from there and through. Yeah, yeah. And from a rhythm and tempo perspective, yeah. yeah I do that without even thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, you do it instinctively. That's true. Absolutely. So obviously, if we want to get some get the club moving correctly in position, we can do that sort of pause drill. Right. We can do this 12 inches in front, and then let's say a player struggling with getting the body motions, which I think a lot of them do. I know you also like to do a, you know, with the club in sort yeah, of no this, hands. Yeah, this is another way of actually starting the whole, you know, yeah, just, just grip the club as far down as you can and just jam it in your navel here. Yeah. There you go, right, okay. So now we can see, once again, this is all about sort of getting the start off, getting start on track. Can you feel that? There we go, see, that's it. Good. Feeling like some core turn. Yeah, core turn, exactly. Little because once oblique. you get, you know, it's. Essentially, once you get an object in motion, it's going to keep in motion. I say the problem is that most players, they don't have any movement here at all, and everything's done, and they, they say, okay, now we have to turn, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Or they, then they compensate, no, you're not turning enough, okay, and then they overturn. So, you know, you've got to get this relationship, this ratio right between, there we go, between the arms and the body, and this is a good way of doing it. Okay, so just stop there, now extend your hands up here now. There you go. And you, you can yeah, see, pretty good see spot. you're in the same spot, right? Now just, now just carry on. Just feel like you're, that's it. Just feel like this keeps moving. Just, that's all you've got to do is keep your core moving all the way. And so I'm almost feeling when I'm doing these, and this is from someone who, you know, loses the side bend or tail and, and, and trying to turn. I'm just really feeling, gosh, I felt this great off camera. David showed me a little downhill lie, way to a ball below your feet. Uh, if you guys are struggling with the tilt like me, that was a really good one to do a video. But I really feel when I'm going back and I'm turning there, like I feel my left oblique, and right. I, I really feel like this like lead rib cage. Mostly there was like an arrow kind of pointing, like this is staying down, you know, right. pointed at the ball. Yep. Compared to my normal, where I'd go high, you know, high with the roll. Right, and you can see how high that left hip is at this point. Yeah, look, look how much higher. I mean, you look from behind here, and that's a it's a good angle of you videoing yourself to actually see that your belt line is now tilted down. This right hip is higher, you can see that. Mm -hmm. You see where you not are this way. Yeah, it's not that thing. Yeah, exactly. This turn level stuff is, you know, I mean, it'd be great to turn level if you had a ball teed up. We're heading yeah, over here. Up here, right? right. I mean, you can turn level. But if the ball's down there, that makes, that makes it a whole different deal. Yeah, and I, I struggle with that, and you may struggle with that as well. Like the consistency of contact, being able to strike the ground over and over. It's so important, like David's saying, obviously we want to start the body 
to get things um, correctly moving. But having that, having that, uh, I'm not going to try that word, but the tilt with the turn <laughs> as we go to keep this inclination to the uh, to the ground is so important with that as well. Can I hit one with that feel, David? Sure. One more with that uh, sensation. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, and you're doing a great job here because this is how people should practice. Okay, if you want to, you want to get this right. Don't just hit ball after ball thinking about it. Make a few practice swings, do a few drills in between, and you'll be amazed. All of a sudden, like you get up there, oh, that's the feel I want. You know, I mean, if you can sort of come out of a practice session and say, I really had a good feel for what I was doing today, yeah. then, you've, then you've cracked the code. That's successful. Yeah. Okay, let's give this one a go here. Seven iron. All right, soften and the I'm arms. And kind of, I'm kind of trying to replicate the sensation of, okay, I'm out here. I've got that core turning down and through. Okay, let me feel that same thing. Getting moving correctly, feeling the body leading the way up to the top. Yeah, and there would be another solid seven iron for me. So I like those, David. Obviously, if you guys want to check out these programs, we're kind of doing a high level overview of the drills. We'll put that in the first link down below the swing fix sequence that David did. I really like the straightaway training aid you know, that we talked about earlier. But what I like even more are the concepts that you show of how to get the body moving. And so many you know, average golfers need, need well, those. Well, things. yeah, the correct move away, the correct body movement, they complement one another so well. And you've got to have the two together. You can't just work on the takeaway if your body's not moving correctly. So, but it doesn't take a whole lot to get your body moving. As long as you understand it and you get that good start, you put those two together, that's what consistency and repeatability is all about. Very cool. Awesome for me. Awesome for you to come out and do some videos like Thank this. You. Thanks Guys, hopefully much, you enjoyed. Again, if you want to grab that program, we'll put that in the first link down below. Appreciate you watching.